Hello everyone. Hope you guys are able to hear us. Uh, are we audible? Great. Uh, so let us start with the uh, uh, second day of your 21 days of code. Uh, as you might be knowing that uh, Interviewbit is having 21 days of code where we have to maintain a streak for 21 days. Uh, so today I will be going live and will be maintaining this streak uh, using my account. Uh, and we will be going live for the next 21 days and where you can mention the questions that you want us to solve for that day and we will be solving them live in front of you okay yes so let us begin for today so today uh, we had mentioned on linkedin about the questions that you want uh, and the reply that we got was that for the array topic you guys want us to solve three questions so let us start with those uh, are you guys able to see my screen Right. I hope my screen is visible. Great. So uh, we will be uh, today solving three questions of arrays. Uh, the one will be uh, the one that people told was largest number. Uh, the other question was maximum consecutive gap. And I think there was one more question that people told us to solve. So yes, let us start solving them one by one. Uh, so as you can see that I have maintained, I have done my today's streak already, but I haven't solved these questions uh, in some time. So yep, they will be almost like new to me. Uh, so what were the questions that people had told us to solve today? Uh, the very first question was maximum consecutive work cap. So we will be solving this today. The other was largest number. So we will be solving this and it was the next one. The next one was maximum sum contiguous subarray. Great. So all these questions are quite popular and are asked at uh, some great organizations. So it will be interesting solving them. Let us start with maximum sum contiguous subarray. OK. I'm going to show this again. Let's see to pop in. Cool. So this is my new account because uh, for this thing, I have created another account. And let us see. Uh, find the contiguous. So the question says that you have to find a contiguous subarray uh, within an array. Okay, so we are we will be given an array A, uh, whose length will be n, and uh, we have to find the contiguous subarray within an array, which has the largest sum. Okay, so for example, that uh, we are given this array A, and uh, okay, so there might be multi. There can there can be how many subarrays? So for an array of size n, there can be like n into n minus 1 by 2 subarrays. OK, so out of those subarrays, we have to find the one that has the largest one. OK, for example, like this subarray has some 2. This has some 2 plus 3, 5 plus 4, 9. Uh, this has some 3 plus 4, 7, minus 7, minus 10, which is minus 3. So one thing to note here is that the numbers can be negative. OK, so I think the largest answer will be here 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, which is 10. OK, 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 so we have to just return the integer, which is basically the largest sum in this survey. We don't have to put the indexes. We just have to return what is the largest sum. OK, OK, so let us take this example only 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 10. Hmm. One very brute force way that can come into my mind is that, hey, I can choose a start index. Basically, my algorithm can be choose a start index. Uh, then I choose an end index. Then calculate sum of that subarray. And uh, then basically have a global maximum. And uh, answer will be equal to max of answer comma current sum something like that. So there, if we have to choose a start index, there can be n start indexes. Similarly, there can be n uh, end indexes. Calculating sum can take order of n, but we can actually calculate it on the go. So it will be like, let us say, we, we can do it in order of 1. 
So the time complexity will be something like order of n square, okay, where n is the length of the array t. As we are given that n can be 10 to the power 6, so solving something in n square will time limit, okay. Let us see, I mean, like, suppose my answer starts from index 1. I mean, like, suppose it starts from 2, 3, 4. Suppose my answer is 2, 3, 4, okay. As the number just before 2 was 1, which is positive, so it won't be, I mean, like, it will never be a bad thing that if I also include 1, right? I mean, like, it will only increase my answer, okay? So if somehow I can compute, I mean, like, if the sum before my current index is positive, and I can include that sum in my answer, so that will work, right? Okay. So suppose here I can say that, hey, uh, my current sum will be 1, okay? Because my current sum is 1, if I include that sum that I have till now here, so it will, it's only going to increase. So one plus two is definitely going to be one plus uh, two is uh, definitely going to be greater than only two, right? Okay, so I can similarly one comma two comma three will always be greater than two, which will always be greater, will always be greater than one comma two, which will always be greater than only two, okay? Or even only three. So what I can do is, hey, that I maintain a prefix sum answer, okay, suppose in my current sum is zero, okay, then let me calculate the size of the array in a variable n, okay, and I iterate over the array for int i equals to zero i less than n plus plus i, okay, what can happen? So if my current sum is positive, if my current sum from the left is positive, that means it is going to add some positive value to the answer. So definitely, I mean, like, uh, if that positive value is included, that will give a larger sum, right? But if that current sum is negative, I should not include that, okay? So I can change that current sum equals to max of zero or current sum, okay? So then I, when I have the current sum, now I have to include the current element, the eliminated current index to the current sum. So I can say that current sum plus equals to a i. Okay. So this should be my answer till now. But uh, let me have a global variable here of answer, which initially can be the minimum answer possible like int min. Okay. So here I compute answer equals to max of answer comma current sum. And I can return the answer. This should work, uh, but let us say what are the edge cases. Suppose the size of array is zero. In that case, what should I return? In that case, the answer should be zero, but we are given that the size of array is minimum one, okay? So suppose the size of array is one. That means that array is only one. Uh, I will say answer is equal to int min. This loop will go only to index zero current sum will remain zero, so current sum plus equals to one, and the answer will be one. I think this should work. Let us test over this case. One, two, three, four, and minus 10. Let me test over this uh, custom input. And in teacher array, first number is the size, okay? Five, one, two, three, four, minus 10, right? So the answer here should come out to be 10, if I'm not wrong, yes. Yes, the answer is correct. I don't have any global variables. This seems fine. Let us test it. Interesting. Okay, one more thing. Okay, my, I am storing my answer in what we say an integer. Okay, what is the maximum possible value of answer? Maximum possible value of answer will be when all the numbers are the maximum possible number, which is 10 to the power 3. And we are told that there are 10 to the power 6 numbers. So the maximum answer will be 10 to the power 9. So max will be max will be 1e9. And this can easily come in an integer. So I think we are safe. We don't need to take a long, long int. And let us submit it. What happened? OK, they have opened one hint for me for free.
Hmm. I can't see anything here. Yep. So we got 222 out of 225 points. We solved it very fast in like seven minutes. So that's good. Cool. So that was the first question that we had to do. Maximum sum survey. Awesome. Now, do you guys have any doubts? Anyone has any doubts for this? Uh, Jashan says, please, sir, solve the number n by 3 repeat number. That That is actually an interesting question. Let us take it tomorrow. I mean, like, OK? Because today we have already selected the uh, questions. OK? So yeah. Let us start with the next question. So we have to take the maximum consecutive gap. This is actually an interesting question. Uh, when I had solved it the very first time, I was able to very, I mean, it was very, had very large number of edge cases. Okay. So you are told that you are given an unsorted array. Find the maximum difference between the successive elements in its sorted form. Okay. Try to solve it in linear time or space. Okay. So okay. Also, we are given a in a constant form. So that means we can't modify the array a. So that is one thing that we have to take in consideration that we can't modify the array a. Okay. Also, we are told that. Uh, if the array contains less than two elements, we can just return zero. I mean, like, yes, obviously, if there is only one element, then there is no gap in the array. OK, and you may assume that all the elements in the array are non-negative integers and fit in the 32 bit. OK, so all the numbers are 32 bit, but will the will the answer be also 32 bit? Yep. So you are saying that the difference will also not overflow, so the answer will fit in an integer. Cool, that is fine. OK, so had we been allowed to sort the array, I mean, like, had we been allowed to modify the array, we could have just sort uh, the array A. And we could have just, I would say, return um, the max of AI uh, minus AI minus 1 uh, for all i from 1 to n, right? Yep from 1 to n minus 1, where n is the size of array A, OK? Hmm. OK, huh. and uh, if n is less than 2, just return 0. So yeah, but this will be of time complexity of order of n log n, hmm. OK? So this is the time complexity of order of n log n. But we are told that we have to do in linear time or space. Hmm. Let us take this array only, 1, 10, 5. Hmm. If I draw these numbers on, I mean, like if I take a number line, this will look something like 1. There will be a lot of empty spaces. Then it will come 5. Then 6 should have come here, 7 should have come here, 8 should have come here, 9 should have come here, 10 should have come here. Hmm. OK. So if I remember that, OK, so we had to sort the array, right? If I had to sort the array A, uh, there are multiple ways to sort the array. Uh, obviously, I would have used an inbuilt library function, but there is also a sorting method known as counting sort. So where what would I have done? I could have created like an array from 1 to 10 which would have like uh, indexes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And at each particular index, I could have had the count of number of elements equal to that particular index. So here I would have 1, then 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Hmm. OK. Hmm. So uh, obviously, if the size of this array would have been like, 10 to the power 5, something like that, then I would have been able to solve it in order of n. But we are not given anything about the size of the array here. So we can't assume that the range of the numbers will be 10 to the power 5. OK. OK. So what if I see here on line number 11 is that suppose this was not 5. I mean, like currently, the answer is 
5 minus 1, which is 4, and 10 minus 5, which is 5. So currently the answer is 5, right? Yep, the answer is 5. Okay, so, but if suppose it was 7, then I would have here, and I would have 7 here, right? So basically the gap between 7 and 1 is increasing, while the gap between 7 and 10 is decreasing. Hmm. It kind of is like acting like a rubber band that where you are squeezing the element 7 to left or right, okay? What can be the worst case? I mean, like, what can what should be the minimum answer here? I mean, like, suppose this was the case, then this gap is 6, and this gap is 3, okay? Suppose I would have taken 7 here, and then this would have been something like here. So it's, suppose it would have been 6. So the answer would have been, this gap would have been 5, and uh, this gap would have been 4. So I think, yep, if I take this one more here, then the answer would have been 4 comma 5. Yep. So, okay, so what we can see is that basically uh, pairs are happening, right? I mean, like if the element squeezes, uh, then one thing is decreasing, whereas the other thing is increasing. So the answer should be like n by 2 for each gap. I mean, like for 10, the answer should be something close to 5, which is 5. So I mean, like there definitely can't be an answer uh, smaller than this. So this should be the minimum answer if there are three numbers at least, okay? Okay, so if I know that uh, minimum answer is five, if I know that minimum answer is five, so can I group all these numbers in range of five? I mean, like suppose if my numbers would have been one, two, three, and five. So suppose I had one group where I had one comma two comma three, then I had another group which only had five. Suppose we also had nine here. So the other group would have all the numbers from 5 to 9. Then this group would have 10. Because the answer definitely is going to be 5. So there cannot be the answer within this group only, right? Because all the numbers within this group are less than 5 distance apart. Similarly, all the numbers in this group are less than 5 and all the numbers here, okay? Okay. Minimum answer is going to be 5. Okay, and then I can calculate answer by maximum of this group. Uh, sorry, minimum from this group minus maximum from the previous group, right? Good. So let us see how can we first calculate what the minimum possible answer is going to be. Okay, suppose the numbers were 1, 5, and 10, uh, as the example was given. Uh, then minimum came out to be 5. Minimum was 5, right? And we also had to group in the ranges of 5. Okay. So basically we can see that there are two intervals here that this is, uh, I mean like one to five, suppose was there, this one. So then we would have one interval from one to four. So this was one interval, then this was another interval and then this was here. Okay, so basically I have to div divide all the numbers from here to here in, suppose there were, I mean like how many? Suppose there were three numbers into two intervals, right? All the numbers in this part into two intervals. Okay, so I can have number of intervals equal to two. And what is the range of numbers? That will be 10 minus one. So I can first calculate maximum and minimum. And maximum equals to value at max element a dot n or a dot n. Okay, then I have minimum also as value at min element a dot begin and a dot end. Okay. So what can be okay, then how many buckets will I have to make? So if I take this case, my number of intervals will come out to be two, which should actually be n minus one. So here n will be the size of array. Yep, n will be the size of array. Okay. So the number of intervals this interval i mean like all this will have to be divided into n minus one different parts if all the numbers are equal distant okay so there will be n minus one parts like two parts here okay and i know the maximum minus minimum then range can be maximum minus minimum. Yep. okay now how many intervals are there so in this case range will come out to be nine so the number of intervals will be, and the number of intervals here are three. 
number of intervals here are three, which is equal to basically nine divided by two, right? Which is almost equal to nine divided by two, or is it not? I mean, like range is equal to nine divided by two, a ceiling plus one. So this is my uh, size of each interval, okay? Because obviously they have to be integer, so they will be seal of this by one, the ceiling of this by one, okay? So that will be the minimum possible gap. And minimum possible gap will be equal to hmm, seal of float of Hmm. Seal of float, or can I say something like this? Seal of float of range divided by number of intervals plus one. Okay, I can do that. Can anything be zero here? Can the number of intervals be zero? What is the value of n? Yep n can be one so in that case i should return zero right if n is less than two i should just directly return zero if n is less than two uh, return zero great then what will happen so now my range is fine mm, number of intervals is not going to be zero right because it is n minus one so definitely there is not going to be any division error okay so now, as I told that I have to have a minimum and maximum of each interval, right? So let me create, okay, but how many intervals will be there? So this is the minimum possible gap. So each interval will be of that size, okay? So the number of in total intervals will be equal to, will be equal to range plus one, right? Because I mean like all these numbers, there are total of 10 minus one plus one, which is 10 numbers in the range of one to 10. So I have to divide those 10 numbers in uh, n plus one numbers basically. Yes, or 10 numbers. Because if each number is five away, then I will get uh, one comma two comma three comma four here. I will get uh, Comma six, comma seven, comma eight, comma nine here, and ten here, right? So this is the maximum. This is the minimum. Hmm. And each interval is of size four or five. So each interval should be of size five. So this will come here. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. They should suffice here. And the answer will be five. Here. They should work. So the total number of intervals will be. Uh, range which is maximum minus minimum plus one okay and uh, then upon minimum possible gap because all the numbers should have been at least at this range then I take a ceiling of this first let me convert this to floor float and then let me take a ceiling of this Okay, suppose I have this as total number of intervals, then I can create a maximum and minimum value of that thing, vector of int, max interval of size total intervals. And I can initialize it by int min. Mm, then I can have a uh, min interval, size total intervals again. And initialize it by int max. Okay. Then do I see anything there? Okay. So all the numbers will be minimum and maximum. Okay. So then I iterate over all the numbers and assign it to a group. Okay. For auto numbers in my array A. Will be group of that number. Group of that number will be equal to numbers minus minimum. I mean like indexes. So suppose let us have the numbers as zero, one, two, three, four, maximum and as many of them as zero, uh, divided by, uh, divided by, it should be something like, uh, 
minimum possible gap, right? Because each interval is at a size of this. Okay, so. okay, so if I get that, then I have to change the max interval of group to max of this common numbers. We common numbers. Oh, actually, I have to change min interval of group to min of this and numbers. Numbers. Okay. And when I have that, then I can just, I mean, like I have to do probably this thing only that my answer will be minimum possible gap initially. Uh, minimum possible gap. Okay. And I know total intervals are this, so I can say for int i equals to one. Hmm. I have to actually know the previous maximum as well, right? And then there can be another interval which has nothing. So I have to know the first previous maximum, okay? Let me say that previous maximum is max interval of zero because that is of the zero group okay for int i equals to one i less than total intervals press i if there is nothing in that interval then uh, okay there, there is possible that there is nothing in that interval if there is nothing in that interval then max interval of i will be int min max interval of i is equal to int min. In that case, sorry, I can say that if max interval of i is equal to int min, I can just, I don't have to consider that there's nothing here. I can just continue. Hmm. Okay, else uh, answer will be equal to max of answer comma min interval of this uh, minus the previous max that we had right yep. and then i will have to change the previous max to uh, max interval of i yes that should work and i can return answer here but is there something that i am missing probably or something like that if n is less than two, I have just returned the answer. So there can't be anything zero here. Can total intervals be zero? Because if total intervals is zero, then max interval zero won't exist, right? Total intervals will be zero if minimum possible gap is greater than, if uh, minimum possible gap is greater than range, right? Then range, when can this happen? This can happen in cases like, uh, if minimum possible gap is greater than range, then my total intervals will become zero, right? Okay, when will minimum possible gap be greater than range? Uh, yes, when all the numbers are together, like something like one comma one comma one comma one, that is one case. If that means I can check here if uh, maximum minus minimum equal equals to zero, where all the elements are same, I can just return zero. Obviously, there's not going to be any gap. Okay, this thing is clear. Minimum possible gap is clear. Total intervals is going to be this. Is there any other case then this total intervals can become zero? If total intervals is zero, then will that happen? Minimum possible gap is greater than maximum minus minimum plus one. Hmm. That can't happen, right? Because all the max minus minimum all the numbers, if are same, then this can happen. It can also happen in cases like this. All the numbers are one comma one comma one comma one comma one comma two, where uh, the minimum possible okay, the minimum possible gap will then take care of this. I think they should go because then minimum possible gap will already be uh, what do you say? Minimum possible gap will be one. In that case, the total intervals will get taken care of. Yes, so I think this should work. Let us see. Hmm. So I have done one bad mistake. Let me actually try run it on my code first. 
this is going to be 1105 3 1 10 5 3 1 10 5 this work oh it's not working why is this not working because here my range will come out to be maximum minus minimum which will be equal to 10 minus 1 Range is 9 by 2, 4 plus 1, range is 5. So there will be 5 numbers in this thing. Then minimum possible gap will be float of range, which will be equal to 9 divided by number of intervals. And the number of intervals will be equal to, in this case, 2. 9 divided by 2 will be 4 plus 1, 5. So the minimum possible answer is not this, but it is only this. I, don't, I should not have one. Yeah. Cool. Will this work now? In this case, it should work. Let us see if it passes for the general case as well. Okay, it does pass. Let us see if it passes everything. Nope, it doesn't. What is the issue that you have? We have an issue that your function returns something like this. But it should return a lot larger value, okay? So my function is returning this, where it should have been returning 7001, yep. So where is the issue? The answer is previous interval I'm updating. If max interval is this, I am then interviewing change in this. Okay, answer is equal to minimum possible cap. Then what am I missing? Let me actually see on my copy what am I doing wrong. Let me take my copy for this and Okay, so I see that uh, I will have max interval of this and this, and total intervals will be coming out to this C by minimum possible cap, right? Hmm. Maximum minus minimum is actually not total interval, right? Should it be maximum minus minimum only because the very first number will actually come in the first interval, so it should be maximum minus minimum divided by float of minimum interval. This should be it. And this should work, I think. Let us try and put this case now. It should be 49751007. Hmm, no. What is happening, guys? Is there anyone who can find a mistake in this code? Or who thinks that where is the issue here? I think we are doing some off by one errors here. Can there be multiple things? This thing is fine. This thing is fine. Numbers minus minimum by cap should also be fine. OK, so what should be the answer here? So I will have my total intervals equal to this. Hmm. Maximum of this. Hmm. Will there be only these many intervals? But if there are more than this interval, then I should be able to get somewhere, right? Maximum minus minimum by cap. By number of intervals is n minus 1, which should be fine. And my range is maximum minus minimum, which should also be fine. Then what is the answer here? Because I'm not getting an off by one error, so this will also be fine. And uh, hmm. Okay. Am I calculating this correctly? Numbers minus minimum. Is there anyone who can find the error? Where are we messing up? Or oh, let us try to fix it up. If n is less than 2, we are fine. If the number of intervals is n minus 1, okay, they, these are going to be the number of intervals or basically uh, the number of numbers between this. So this should be fine. Then the answer will be cap by number of numbers, right? Number. Okay, range is equal to maximum minus number. So range by number of intervals should be my answer. So, and I'm also converting them to my float. And uh, of max. Am I doing something wrong here? Hmm, of blocks. This seems to be fine. Okay, so there should be actually one number here more, right? Or will it not be? 
my answer should be minimum possible index. Let me just think about it again. Hmm. n is equal to a dot size. If the value of n is less than 2, I can just return 0. The number of intervals are going to be n minus 1. The maximum is this. Minimum is this. All the numbers from max to minimum are going to be separated in groups of something like this, right? OK, if there is no number, I mean, like all the numbers are the same, then I can just return 0. This is the range of numbers, and then I will have to I think I will have to do range plus one, right? Might be. Range plus one, because nine divided by two is four. Float of four is four, and then. OK, so my minimum possible gap here will come out to be float of range. Range is like nine, OK, by number of intervals, which is two. So this will turn out to be 4 of 9 by 2, which is 4.5, which will turn out to be 5. So this is going to be fine. OK, total intervals is going to be seal of maximum minus minimum by minimum possible gap. And also, I'm converting my minimum possible gap to the correct thing. So this should also work. My maximum number of intervals are going to be something like this, which is also fine. Right? Okay, max is I'm setting to int min, my min I'm setting to this, which is also fine. Then I'm iterating over all the numbers in array A. People are saying that it can be overflow. Let us see if this is really overflow. I don't think this can be overflow because we are told you may assume that the answer will not overflow. So definitely it can't be overflow because so answer the previous max is max interval of zero, right? If max interval i equal to int min, so the answer is definitely not overflow. I can say that number of intervals is going to be n minus 1, yes. And then I think total intervals should have something plus 1. Right? Because what if the last number falls somewhere ahead? So basically, let us say if we have numbers of size 5, intervals of size 5, 3, 4 will go here, 5 will go here, then 6, 7, 8. 9 comma 10 will go here and suppose there was also an 11 then 11 would have gone here in this case suppose the numbers were 1 5 and 11 suppose the numbers were 1 comma 5 comma 11 we see that range is going to be 10 okay in that case range by and number of intervals will be uh, 2 right number of intervals will be 2 in this case this answer will be 5 minimum possible gap which is perfectly fine this will be 5 okay then my total intervals will come out to be maximum okay but total number will be come out to be maximum minus minimum which is 10 which is also range so seal of range here basically nothing else range by minimum possible gap which will be 5 so range is 10 by 5 which is 2 plus 1 should be there yes definitely plus 1 should be here because there are three intervals in this case but will that solve this problem let us see Will this even solve this problem? It should not, because otherwise we would have gotten a, oh, it does. We are getting the correct answer. But why did we not get the answer here? Because we never actually iterated over that interval. And max interval of group, why did this not return an error? Let's try to submit it if the code is fine. I don't doubt it can be fine. It be fine. Oh, it is fine. So what was the error that we had actually? We had that our number of intervals was less by one. We found that using this test case, when we run the, using this, we found that, OK, our total intervals was coming less than one. And we created this array of size total intervals. OK. What are we missing? Great. So suppose there was a number here that had to come in that particular interval. Its group, its group would not exist even, right? Because the max interval of group should not exist in that case. Interesting. So if max interval of group won't exist, won't it lead to index out of bound errors? It doesn't. Interestingly, it doesn't. Why? 
let us actually come back to it this thing why this code didn't work initially at the end of this stream and let us first solve the third question that we were given which is the largest number great but this is an interesting issue that we actually found today so we have to solve the largest number hmm. so we are told that we are given a list of non negative integers arrange them such that they form the largest number okay for example given 3 30 34 5 and 9 you have to arrange it in this way okay hmm one thing that i can see is that okay if a number is bigger i mean like if its very first index is bigger it should probably come earlier right because obviously if i have to form suppose something like using this array if i have to form something using this array then uh, obviously i would want 9 to come earlier because 9 has the largest digit so more early than 9 is the better it is for me then i would definitely want 5 to come earlier because that has a larger uh, first unit then out of these three what would i like to have actually i would like to have more something like okay suppose i say that okay uh, i like to have uh, 34 first but if i have 34 and then uh Three and then okay. Suppose suppose okay. Thirty four. I can have it, and then if I have thirty, then I can have three. That is fine. But had this three been here, then the overall number would have been better, right? Because then the number would have come out to be nine five thirty four. Basically, that three would have shifted somewhat here. Three forty three and then thirty. Okay. Hmm. And what if the three would have been even more there? Nine five three. No, this would not. This would have been bad, right? Three three four three zero would have been bad. Okay, so I kind of want that this number, the number that is formed by combining these two, should be greater. Okay. Okay. So basically, I want my numbers, my I want these numbers to be arranged in such way that. i have to combine them in this order only such that they form strings in the largest way right okay i mean like suppose i would have after 3 i would have had 9 then that would have created 39 whereas after 9 i would have had 3 so that would have created 93 and 93 is always better than 39 okay so basically i think that i'm kind of dealing something like with strings basically if numbers were strings i know so because i have to concatenate the numbers concatenate the digits so i can first convert all my numbers here to string so let me say vector of string string numbers okay then for all numbers okay for all the numbers a i will say string numbers dot push back i have to convert those numbers to strings so basically c++ has this function to string of numbers this will work perfectly fine but now this will just convert these to strings so rather than 330 now they are strings nothing more okay now i have to sort these numbers in such a way that uh, i mean like they are in such a way that suppose 9 is earlier than 30 that means that means 930 should be greater than 39 309 Right. So okay. So if I have to sort them in that way, then I would need to have my custom sorting function definitely. So let me make a sorting function that will do exactly this thing. That will concat that will arrange the numbers in such way that the string formed of consecutive numbers will be the larger than any other string forms. Okay. So we, I will have to have a custom sort function which will take strings, two strings, so constant string. Uh, a and it will take constant string t. E. Okay, so what are the cases? So I I want to arrange them in the increasing order, right? I want to arrange them in the increasing order. So I want this order. Right? Okay. So this will happen, and custom sort will say custom sort has to return true if this is less. Okay. I mean, like custom sort. If custom sort function will return true, then a will be less than b. So I have to do the opposite. So I will say return a plus b is greater than b. So say something like that. 
what it means is that if a plus b will be greater then a will come before b in the final array so i mean like if this is true then my array will have a here and then b here and this is string concatenation so this will work okay okay so now i have to sort my string numbers in this way Again, comma dot end, and I have to use this custom plot function. Okay, suppose I have this. Okay, by the way, can the numbers be negative? Because if numbers could become negative, then this will okay. So it's not negative. So then the thing is fine, and so we have to return the answer as it is. Okay, cool. Okay, so let me make a string answer, which I will return. Initially, it will be an empty string. Hmm. So, because all the numbers are now arranged in the perfect order, so I will say for auto numbers in the string numbers array, answer plus equals to numbers. Hmm. So this will return the answer. I mean, like I can return the answer. But what happens whenever I actually read, whenever actually we convert a number to a string is that it might have initial leading zeros. So normally we should avoid leading zeros. So we need to check if this particular number would have had leading zeros. So normally I have encountered this particular edge case in this kind of question. So let me say that int first non-zero is equal to zero. Then I will run loop for uh, first uh, non-zero will be less than n. What will be n here? n will be string number dot size because these, okay, sorry, string. This will be answer dot size. I have to iterate over each digit of the answer and I have to find the first non zero digit. So I will say n, uh, n is equal to answer dot size. Okay, then i less than n, then plus plus i. If this particular character, if, if answer i is not equal to zero i'm like it's a non-zero number i can just play so basically i know that at all the numbers before this i were zero so i have to remove those leading zeros okay so if i was zero i mean like the very first number of itself was non-zero so i can return the answer directly i mean like that is fine okay worst case i can be n okay else if i equal equal to n this means it was everything zero, right? If it was everything zero, then answer is zero. So I can just return zero, okay? Else I have to return the substring of answer from the ith digit, right? Yep. Else I will say return answer dot substring i and the length of the substring will be n minus i. Okay, so this should work. If I don't have any issues, so let us take 3, 30, 34, 5, 9. Uh, 3, 30, 34, 5, 9, and the size of this array is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's see what the answer is. And I'm returning. I'm, I am, no, I again have issues. What is the issue? No matching function for, okay. So what I have the vector of, great. So I have a vector of integer and I'm returning, I'm pushing strings to it. So that's a very bad mistake to do. Do I have any other errors? No, let us test it. Hmm. Okay, errors. Okay, so this thing should be here. I'm doing very bad errors today. Influence of no, no practice since long. Here also this. Here also this. Now hopefully there doesn't seem to be any error, other error. Great. I should now start practicing again so that I can do it in the very first attempt. I'm doing a lot of bad mistakes today. Now this will be perfectly fine. Answer plus equals to nums. This is, I think, a wrong letter, right? Yes, this is highlighted for this thing. Answer is correct. And number is correct. N is equal to answer dot size. Oh, God. This time it should come out to be correct. Yep. 
The answer is 9534330. Seems fine. Let us test it. Hmm. Yep, this is fine. Let us submit it. Did we miss any corner case today? Yep, we got it. Cool. So now we had one question left that we had not seen yet. Yes. So let us now try to solve why is the first thing not working. I mean, like why the previous code was not working. Uh, let me see. Do you guys have any questions other than that? Sure, let us then see why are, are you guys able to see my screen, right? Okay, let me change my screen now. Yes, hopefully you guys are able to see the screen. Let us see that why our maximum consecutive gap did not lead to an error when the total number of intervals was less than one. What would have happened? Did, did we not as assess the last interval any time? We are setting the max interval to this. We are setting the numbers to this. And this was fitting. This was fitting. Okay. If we have to go to the last index, what, would, what was the case where this actually failed? This failed when this was the size of the whole total number of intervals was one less. That means something was going to come in the very last interval. OK, so many intervals of i. This thing is all fine. But OK, by the way, I can just remove this else check here because we are in this container, so that doesn't matter really. Hmm. So what is this minimum possible gap going to be? If our total intervals was one larger, and then we are setting a max interval and min interval of that range, we are getting a wrong answer. Yes, we are getting a wrong answer because let us actually take the case where we were getting the wrong answer. Do, do we still have that in the custom input? No. Let us actually change it to wrong again. So we all know that it was wrong, right? And let us submit it. So we will get one case where it was breaking. And let us try to dissect what that particular case was. OK, so we also got one other case where this was failing. 1, 10, 21, 33, 45. OK. And this was the only error we have. So if we have array like this, then our range is going to be 45 minus 1, which is 44. And our minimum possible gap is going to be 44. And the size is n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, n is equal to 4. And then we see that minimum possible. So n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is number of intervals. So our minimum gap in this case will be equal to 44 by 4, which will be 11. OK. And our total intervals will be equal to uh, 44 divided by minimum gap, which is 11, which is 4 if we do this case. And in the correct answer, they were 5. So we got the case again where this particular issue was happening. So definitely there should be one, but then why did our code not break? So then we would have created a maximum and minimum array of size four. So we would have a array of size four. One, 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 one. Similarly, we would have this of one, one, one. Yep, amazing. And then when I would have assessed the number 45, this would have been assigned to 45 minus one, which is 44. Uh, divided by minimum possible gap, which is 11, to array 4. But array 4 doesn't even exist. 
so we should have gotten an array index out of pound yes we would have gotten an index out of pound error because this index would not even exist but do we really get that 1 10 21 33 45 5 1 10 21 33 45 and uh, do we get the array index out of bound or we return a wrong answer we return some wrong answer here so that is what the issue was we were not getting array index out of bound due to some reason which i also don't know i mean like, sorry the total number should have been this then we should have gotten an array index out of bound are we getting that yep so basically we see that our the output we were getting was probably confused we get an error here basically we return nothing so that is why the issue was actually there i don't know why the submit returned something wrong but yes we are getting runtime error if we have such cases but our code didn't return that at that particular time probably some issue with the code editor but i think this should work now great cool so those were the three questions that we had to do for today any other question that you want us to solve tomorrow please let us know and we will be meeting you tomorrow at the exact same time make sure to complete your whole 21 days of code as well and see you tomorrow goodbye